A very good afternoon to you. Is Gwen Gwenya's assessment of the DA's position on policy accurate? Uh, I think we'd have to say it is because when you actually look through the DA policy itself, and I think this is a question we need to ask the DA, we don't know where does this, where was this office envisioned as being. So in the, I think in the absence of any other evidence, we're going to have to take the letter at its word and believe that what she's saying is quite accurate. And on the latest developments in Tswani, Salim Simanga basically through a spokesperson absolving himself of any guilt in the GLAD Africa situation. Do you think his statements go, or his statement at least so far goes far enough in clearing himself? I think it, it really doesn't and I think it really raises the question if you look at the DA over the last 20 years one of the things they've always uh, stood their ground on is to say we're a party that's very clear on how we do governance so if someone now unilaterally in the face of I think the Auditor General's report and other subsequent reports is able to say listen I've done nothing wrong it really raises the question to say does the DA actually when it's in power really actually practice what it seems to always accuse the ANC of doing? What does this mean for the opposition in Swani? Does this latest scandal where Glad Africa is concerned then make it easy for the ANC and EFF to use this to their advantage politically to benefit, especially as we go to the election? I think it muddies the waters because you have to also remember there's a reason why the ANC lost power. It's not as though this is some new party that just got a second position. This is a party which had also had its own scandals. I think, if anything, it, it makes it very hard for the electorate of Tswane to really come to a firm decision as, as to who to trust because it would seem that they put in the DA, albeit via a hung, a hung uh, electorate, to say, listen, maybe you guys could do what the ANC couldn't do. So it really just leaves citizens in a bit of a quandary and really raises the question who can actually lead South Africa and lead most municipalities properly. I want to ask you a question I put to Dr. Samato Tafigeni earlier and that's around just how big a voting issue corruption is in South Africa given the very competing uh, pressures on the average person living in this country at the moment. Uh, look, we, use, we have to use available data, and I think uh, if you have to look at the ANC over the, over the last 25 years, especially the last local government elections, where people basically just said, listen, we really are fed up with, uh, I think, was a perceived or perceived corruption around President Jacob Zuma. So we have to say, as South Africa is growing older, it would seem the electorate are really starting to really, I think, take, uh, take a look, deeper look at issues of corruption and are starting to say, listen, you're not in what you're doing, corruption, you're not representing me properly. But I think we haven't really reached that crucible where people, I think, are angry to the level where they say, listen, let's actually just go for a total alternative. I think somehow there's still a silo mentality of people believe in party more than actual issues. With that in mind, and the latest on GLAD Africa, and of course, Solim Simanga, there's been no pronouncement on whether he was involved in any sort of corruption in this instance, just that the tender was irregular. How does the Democratic Alliance confidently field someone to be their premier candidate for Gauteng, given that the Auditor General has already said that at mayor level he failed to exercise his oversight duty? I think this goes back to uh, the letter Ms. Uh, Ms. Nguyenia put out there, which is to say it would seem as though there's two DAs. There is what I think Noam Chomsky calls a public opinion DA, which they're very great at highlighting problems, saying what they would do differently. And there's the actual policy, which is to say, how did someone like Mr. Solim Samanga actually go from the position of, uh, I think he was just a normal rep within the DA and be catapulted to the position of DA leader. And now he's been catapulted to the position of a potential premier. And you have to remember, but this is not the first time they've done it. They also did this with Mr. Musi Maimani. It would be great if the DA could actually just give a charge sheet, almost like a policy, to say, listen, this is what we view a leader to be. This is what a leader should be. And I think Ms. Gwenya, in a maybe roundabout fashion, is actually asking the DA for more charity on how are we going to govern if South Africans actually give us power. Because from what she's experienced, it would seem as though there is a public opinion DA, which is great at what they do, but the actual governance, as in the deep, or the boring stuff I might call it, of actually governing, it seems to actually be a Looting the DA as they continue to grow. Okay, Dr. TK Boy live for us in Pretoria this afternoon.